Welcome back to Garage Science. This time I'll be showing you how to make a safe, reliable electrolyte to electroplate copper in a mason jar. The previous electroplating videos I have made involved the use of several harsh and dangerous chemicals including battery acid and hydrochloric acid. These chemicals are capable of causing severe chemical burns and should be avoided if possible. Well, there is another way to get reliable copper plating without using these chemicals. Keep in mind the plating capacity of this safer electrolyte won't be as high as the more dangerous one, but it is leaps and bounds safer to use. If you would like to make the more dangerous solution, I have linked that video in the description. These are the chemicals we'll need to make this electrolyte. Zep Root Kill. This will provide the copper sulfate needed to provide the initial dissolved copper ions in the electrolyte. Citric Acid. This will make the solution more conductive and provide something called throwing power that will allow for better plating in cracks and crevices. Vinegar, aka acetic acid, is a possible substitute here, but is not as strong an acid as citric acid. Table salt. This will provide chlorides which will help corrode and break down the copper electrodes. Do not use sea salt because it contains many other minerals besides sodium. Laxative. Particularly, you need laxative made of PEG or polyethylene glycol. This acts as a brightening and leveling agent and assists in making even deposits of copper. Distilled water. Do not use tap water, spring water, or filtered water. All these sources will still contain significantly more minerals than distilled water. This recipe is based on the same one used in the last copper plating video I made, which used these measurements. I'll be making 24 ounces of electrolyte in a one quart mason jar, and I've already done the math to get all the chemical concentrations right with basic measuring tools. Start by pouring 24 ounces of distilled water into the mason jar. Then heat it in a microwave for four to five minutes. Making the water hot will allow the copper sulfate to dissolve faster. Once your water is hot, add two tablespoons of citric acid and mix. Then add five tablespoons of copper sulfate. Be sure to add citric acid first so you don't somehow get copper sulfate in your citric acid. Because citric acid is also used in cooking, you don't want copper sulfate in anything that you're going to cook with. Once the copper sulfate crystals have fully dissolved, add 1 8 teaspoon of laxative and mix completely. Finally, add a small pinch of salt, and by small I mean very small. I know it probably doesn't seem like it's important, but the chlorides will ensure the proper corrosion of the copper electrodes, and you honestly just don't need that many. Once all the chemicals are mixed, cap the mason jar and set it aside. Take some copper wire and form it into an electrode similar to mine. I've bent the top so that it will curve around the inside of the neck of the mason jar. Your copper electrode should have about a 2 to 1 ratio with your part that's going to be plated, meaning the surface area of the electrode should be roughly double the surface area of the part you intend to plate. I did not do this and used a ratio closer to about 4 to 1, and you'll see that my solution progressively gets more and more green as more copper is dissolved in the solution because of the excess copper electrode that's present. Thankfully, this didn't affect my plating results too significantly. Now to make sure no bubbles form on the surface of the part while it's plating, it's important to have some form of agitation in the electrolyte. Agitation causes any bubbles that form to be ripped off by the motion of the water. To create that agitation, I'll be using a small aquarium pump which I purchased for about 12 bucks at Walmart. To mount the air pump, I'll make a simple holder for the plastic hose to hold it to the inside of the mason jar.
Next, take the part you plan to electroplate and mount it inside some type of wire frame. I'll be using quarters as plating test subjects, and I found that folding wire like this is a pretty good way to hold coins. Now you're ready to mount everything inside the mason jar and connect your power supply. I'll show you how to get good plating with just a AA battery as a power supply momentarily, but for now I'm using my variable power supply to do initial testing. I started by plating at 1.5 volts. This is not much voltage, but you will notice that I got about 830 milliamps of current out of that voltage, which is pretty high for something as small as a quarter. In a sulfuric acid plating bath, you want to have about 20 amps per square foot. The plating current I have using 1.5 volts in this electrolyte is equal to about 80 amps per square foot. I did this to show that if you're going to use a battery as a power source, that it isn't a good idea to connect it directly to the plating bath. And as you can see, this is why. The plating results at 830 milliamps were not good at all. For a bath with this chemistry, it's better to keep plating current density to about 5 to 10 amps per square foot which all that really means is that it's better to plate slower for longer with a weaker acid solution like this, which is true for pretty much any weak acid electroplating solution. To get five to 10 amps per square foot of current density for a quarter size part, you need between 50 to 100 milliamps of plating current. To do that, I'll show you how to achieve that plating current with a AA battery and a resistor. Initially, I connected a 15 ohm resistor to the battery, which gave me about 78 milliamps of plating current. I plated this for several hours and got a really good result. I did not immediately clean off the electrolyte, and you can see that the surface gets progressively brown from oxidizing copper. That being said, if you want to have bright orange copper colored parts, make sure you rinse them thoroughly immediately after removing them from the plating bath. Finally, I attached a potentiometer, otherwise known as a variable resistor, to achieve a plating current closer to 50 milliamps. The final resistance of this potentiometer was 33 ohms. I would recommend that you use a potentiometer and a multimeter as I have to get the right plating current, but you could just use a 30 ohm resistor in series with a 1.5 volt battery and call it good and you'd probably be fine. The plating results I had were very bright and since I rinsed the electrolyte off in a small cup of water, the second I pulled it from the bath, I didn't have any noticeable oxidation of the surface. Remember, you can always use a tumbler to polish and brighten your electroplating projects if they come out a little dull. Well, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought or if you have any questions. Remember to give this video a like if you enjoyed watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I've got a lot of other copper plating related videos on my channel, so be sure to look at those as well. Thanks for watching.